Ready again for another episode of Houseboat Hannah. Brought to you each weekday, Monday through Friday, by the makers of Lava Soap. Here is an important message for the woman who's been listening to Houseboat Hannah for some time. Now, surely you've heard about the advantages of scouring and polishing with lava soap many times, and yet you haven't tried it yourself. Well, honestly, why? It can't be the expense, because lava costs but a few pennies. So perhaps it's because you don't believe a special soap like lava can do a good scouring and polishing job, and at the same time actually help keep your hands attractive looking. Well then, please remember that these claims, remarkable as they sound, are the actual results of experience. Yes, and they're confirmed by many, many women who are now using lava soap, who are now discovering that lava really is one thing they can use for scouring and polishing that is specially made to be good to their hands. Now, we could tell you why lava soap is such a fast, thorough, and safe cleanser. Why, for example, it brings a bright, clean sparkle to porcelain surfaces, to pots and pans and woodwork. Why it makes your hands shade whiter as you work with it, and helps keep them soft and smooth, too. But that wouldn't be nearly as satisfying as proving it to yourself, would it? Then, why not do yourself a tremendous favor? Why not throw away those old-fashioned, harsh, gritty cleansers that often roughen and redden your hands? After all... You owe it to yourself as a person living in these modern times to discover the amazing benefits of lava soap, the modern idea in scouring and polishing. And it's so easy to discover. Today at your grocery drugger department store, simply ask for lava soap, L-A-V-A. Remember, because lava soap offers you the double advantage of a remarkably efficient household cleanser and a scouring soap specially made to be good to your hands. And now, for Houseboat Hannah. Last Friday, Abe Finkelstein went to New York on business. Hannah, Dan, and Abe's daughter Becky were at the station to say goodbye. Becky's going to stay on the houseboat with Hannah while Abe is away. Little did Abe suspect the problem that he's put at Hannah's door. For, unknown to her father, Becky has fallen desperately in love with her professor and employer at the university, Professor Borden. Well, Becky spent a happy weekend on the houseboat Hannah. And this Monday morning, as we see her enter the kitchen, Hannah turns from her work at the stove and says... Oh, Becky. Oh, good morning, darling. Good morning, Hannah. Did, did you sleep well? Oh, yes, I slept grand. First good night sleep I've had in weeks. Oh, that's fine, darling. I'm glad to hear it. But where is everyone? Oh, they're all up and gone. Oh, I'll have your breakfast ready in a jiffy. Now, you just sit down. Oh, thanks, table. Hannah, but you mustn't get me to death. Ellen's at awakening. I don't want to be extra work. No, you're not puzzled at all, darling. And will you please tell me why you couldn't catch up on your sleep so long as you don't have to be out of the university until 10 o'clock? Because, well, at least I can make my own toast and coffee. Now, the coffees are all made. <laughs> and there. And your toast is on. <laughs> that wasn't any work. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, there's a telegram for you uh, on the table. A telegram? Yes. Yeah. And I bet I know who sent it. You're right. It's from Father. You arrived safely in New York. Oh, fine, fine. Now, Becky, darling, sit down and I'll I'll take care of it, Hannah. Please don't wait on me. And please don't put the action like a stranger. I won't have it. (laughs) Oh, Hannah, you always have your own way. Well, I I do my best, especially when I think I'm right. (laughs) Sit down, Becky, and I'll give you breakfast. There, that's it, it isn't. Here's your coffee and and your toast. Oh, would you like something else? A nice egg. I got some fresh eggs. Oh, no, thanks, Anna. This is all I ever eat. Say, if it ain't enough to keep a bird alive. <laughs> I'm giving you a fair warning, young lady. If your father stays in New York long enough, I'm going to take you under my wing and teach you how to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one more thing while I think of it, I... I hope you won't be working late tonight. Well, I, I don't know. Well, uh, is that professor, uh, um, what's his name? Gordon. Oh, yes. Now, if he asks you to stay late tonight, you tell him you'll work some other time. Uh, you see, we're going to have a little family party. 
Me and Dan has a little plan to get Ellen and Clem to set the date of their wedding. Well, uh, we think those two have been stalling around long enough. Now, Clem's got his houseboat finished. I and, see. Uh, so you make sure and, and be here on time. By 6.30 anyway. Well, all right, Hannah. I'll be here. I'll be here by 6.30. Finished with her late breakfast, Becky helps Hannah with the dishes and then takes a bus to the university. Arriving at Professor Borden's office, she finds that the professor has gone to one of his classes. So Becky takes her seat at the desk and begins grading student papers. Time passes. Engrossed in her work, Becky pays little heed when, with his class over, Professor Borden returns to his office. Good morning, Rebecca. Oh, good morning, Professor Borden. Out of work? Well, I knew these compositions had to be graded. You know, this John Bascom has a good logical mind. Oh, come now. You don't mean to say there's a logical mind attending summer school. I wish you'd read his paper. Uh, later, Rebecca, later. I'm a bit fatigued. I was class so bad this morning. No worse than usual, I imagine. Same thing, the same thing, the same useless, senseless questions. For the life of me, I don't see why their parents send these dogs to summer school to keep them from underfoot, I suppose. Oh, really? It isn't that bad. Not for them, perhaps, but I assure you it is for me. Well, we, we all have it. Your keen mind, Professor. It's hard to keep up sometimes. <laughs> Making excuses for them, huh? Do you make excuses for me, too, Rebecca? For you? Well, I don't understand. I mean... Every time I tread on your toes, and I know I do it often, do you say to yourself, now I must be careful not to misjudge him. He really didn't mean that. Is uh, that what you say? Oh, Professor, no, what no, I, I didn't expect you to confess all your secrets. <laughs> it is nice to come into my office and find you here, uh, looking so cool and efficient, and I told you it would be like this. Just the two of us away from the world. Professor, I want to speak to you about Lynn Thompson's... Oh, father, oh, Lynn Thompson. Father, all the pupils. How about you? Did your father get off to New York all right? Oh, yes. We put him on the train Friday, and he arrived safely. I received a wire from him this morning. Oh, good, good. Rebecca, how would you like to collaborate with me in writing a book? Oh, I'll be very grateful for the opportunity to help you. But... Not help. Collaborate. All weekend there's been an idea working in the back of my head. It's still vague, but what I have in mind is something more than a textbook. It's something that must breed you. And I need you to give it that spark. Well, but uh, Professor Gordon, I... I told you your youth would help. You're so stimulating, so vibrant. Already you brought me to the point where... Oh, yeah? Oh. Emma. Yes, my dear. I hope I'm not excused. Miss Cosner, Cosner, come in. I happen to be driving past the university. Of course. Oh, well, my dear, I'd like you to meet my new assistant, Miss Finkelstein. Miss Finkelstein, this is Mrs. Borden. How do you do, Mrs. Borden? How do you do? Miss Finkelstein. Rebecca Finkelstein. Oh. Well, my dear, I... Dallas Garfield's back neckties. Why did you wear it? What's the matter with it? I told you this morning. Fox. Full of them. Although I told you it doesn't matter much. Here. Is that what you came in to see me about, Emma? Oh. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon for taking up so much of your valuable time. It's not the time I'm referring to. No, of course not. I understand. What I came in to tell you is that there's a meeting at the Port Nightly Club this evening, and I'm attending. I've made arrangements for the children to dine at Bertha, so there'll be no one at home. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, not at all. Very well, then. I'll be home by 11. And I hope your work is finished by that time. I'll see you at 11. <clears throat> Goodbye, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, uh... Goodbye. No need to remind me. I remember her name. Goodbye. There. There, you see, my dear. She's that way all of the time. 
Mrs. Gordon made no effort to conceal her dislike for me, did she? Oh, don't let that bother you. But, but she's never seen you before. Why should she dislike me? Because you're helping me in my work. She's afraid you will give me something... Something she's consistently refused ever since we've been married. Something she's refused? But I have no intention of replacing no, her. No, of course not. Uh, certainly not. A... You and I have settled that. I, I'm only going to help her in the work. So there will never, never be anything personal between us. Uh, I have a small mind, Rebecca. A small, mean mind. Well, let's forget about I'll her. I'll never be able to forget the way she looks at me. She must hate me. Uh, Rebecca, before we were interrupted, I asked you to collaborate on a book. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And you agree. Well, I'll do all I can. You mean work, a great deal of extra work. Oh, I'm not afraid of work. Sure. Then, uh, shall we start tonight? Well, I do. We'll have dinner together, and then... Oh, no, I... Let's talk of this. After dinner, we can go to your apartment and plan our work. And that's an excellent idea, though. We can not be disturbed. Here, the uh, cleaning women would be in and out, and my home's out of the question. Well, uh, how does the idea sound? Oh, I'm sorry to have to read you. Oh, but... come now. You're not turning down my suggestion because we'll be alone or because your father's in New York. Oh, not at all, but you see... Well, a friend of mine said in there, he didn't do the dinner to me. Oh, I see. Well, then, uh, we'll do it tomorrow night. Professor Gordon, not, while father's away, I'm not living at home. No, you're not. So I'm stopping with friends down in Chantix's floor. I'm living in a houseboat. On a houseboat? How we to stay? Oh, please, Professor Gordon, don't look at me like that. It wasn't my idea. It was father's. He refused to go to New York unless I stayed with his people. I couldn't do anything else. Absolutely not. Well, that takes care of our book. Oh, no. no. Not at all. I want you to write it, and I want to help. You'll find the place to work. Place where we won't be disturbed. I know where we're. Where is that I don't know, but we'll find a place. We'll find a place. Through Professor Borden, playing on Becky's emotions, as though they were a musical instrument, has put her in the wall, has made her feel that she's failed him, has indirectly told her that by moving to the houseboat hammer, that she's standing in the way of his work, that all-important work she has promised to aid. Loving him, pitying him as she does, Driven from emotional pillar to post, Becky promises to find a place where they can work undisturbed. But where will she look? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Now, just a few more words for the lady who hasn't yet tried lava soap for showering and polishing. When a lot of money is involved in buying something you've never tried before, it's smart to hesitate. But when it's something like lava soap, which costs only a few pennies, and which offers such great wonders in keeping your household bright and clean, and at the same time in helping to keep your hands white and smooth, why, then it's just plain common sense to give it a trial. Yes, and all lava asks is a trial. Once you try scouring and polishing with lava, and once you see how good this special soap is to your hands, then you be the judge of whether you want to continue using lava or whether you want to go back to old-fashioned, gritty powder cleansers so often the cause of rough red hands. So remember, today at your dealers, ask for lava soap, one thing you can use for scouring and polishing that is specially made to be good to your hands. What does Becky mean about finding a place where she and the professor could work in peace and privacy? Be sure to be back tomorrow when we bring you another episode in the life of Houseboat Hammer. Until Tuesday, then, the makers of Lava Soap bid you a friendly goodbye. <laughs>